Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be square rooting a complex number. So we have an equation z squared equals 5 plus 12 i and we're going to find the values of z for which this equation is true. And there are two z values because if z is a solution then negative z is also a solution. I'll be presenting three methods at least talk about uh, the third one briefly and let's get started first method suppose z can be written as a plus b i and then z squared is going to be a squared plus 2 a b i plus b squared i squared i squared is negative 1 so I can write it as minus b squared and now this can be rearranged as a squared minus b squared plus 2 a b i putting the real parts together and setting this equal to 5 plus 12 i. Now, notice that if two complex numbers are equal, then their real parts are equal. So a squared minus b squared is supposed to be 5, and 2ab is supposed to be 12, because a and b are real numbers. So now we get a system of equations. How do you solve this system? This is a quadratic system. You can go ahead and divide the second equation by 2 and write this as AB equals 6 and A squared minus B squared is equal to 5. At this point, you, if you want, you can go ahead and guess uh, if, because most of the time the answers are integers or rational numbers or you can go ahead and solve it. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to solve this system. One of them is going to be substitution. Let's go ahead and isolate A squared from the first one and write it as b squared plus 5, and then square the second equation, which gives us a squared b squared equals 36. Now we can go ahead and replace a squared with b squared plus 5. b squared times b squared plus 5 is equal to 36. And at this point, we can go ahead and call b squared c so that we get a quadratic equation. c times c is c squared plus 5c equals 36, but let's go ahead and subtract 36 and turn this into a quadratic equation in C. Hopefully you see what I see. And this is our equation. So how do you solve this equation? Easy, quadratic formula or uh, looking at the factors. Find two numbers whose product is negative 36 and whose sum is 5. If you look at factors of negative 36, uh, those numbers are like 1 and negative 36, 2 and negative 18, 3 and negative 12, 4 and negative 9. Uh-oh, we're trying to get a sum of 5. 4 and negative 9 give us sum of negative, nine, negative 5, but we do need a positive 5. Therefore, we can just switch the signs around and use this as our ordered pair. In other words, these are the two numbers that we've been looking for, and that gives us C minus 4 times c plus 9 equals 0. So by factoring this trinomial, we're able to get the solutions c equals 4 and c equals negative 9. But c is b squared, remember that. So let's back substitute, c is b squared, c is b squared. b squared equals negative 9 is not going to give us any real solutions. Remember, a and b are real numbers. So the second equation is impossible, therefore we end up with the first one, and this gives us two answers. B is either 2 or negative 2, and both of them are real numbers. But if B is 2, since their product is 6, AB is equal to 6. If B is equal to 2, then A becomes a 3. And if B is negative 2, then A will be a negative 3. And these ordered pairs gives us the solution. Because remember, our equation, the solution to our equation, z, was written as a plus bi. So if a is 3, b is 2, then z, gonna be, z is going to be 3 plus 2i. Let's call that z sub 1. And z sub 2 is going to be negative 3 minus 2i. Again, if z is a solution, negative z is also a solution. Because when you square both of these numbers, you get the same thing. Make sense? Okay, so that's one way to solve this quadratic equation. Now obviously there's another way to solve this system. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about that real quick. So we have this, a squared minus b squared is equal to 5 and ab is equal to 6. Uh, this is not always recommended but you can definitely do that too. Uh, you can go ahead and kind of break this down into a plus b and a minus b. 
and then you can call this s for sum from here you get a minus b is equal to 5 over s a plus b is equal to s by adding these and subtracting them you get a and b in terms of s and then by multiplying you get an equation in s which is quadratic so on and so forth by using the difference of two squares or you can do the following which i believe is a lot easier just isolate b as and write it as 6 over a and then just plug it in and then again you'll get a quadratic after substitution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So the second method is going to be the following, z squared equals 5 plus 12i. So I'm going to write this number in polar form. Now think about how we can write a number in polar form, r times e to the power i theta, right? r is the modulus and theta is the angle. And we'll, we'll talk about how we find the angle, but let's go ahead and instead of using a theta, let's use a double angle because we're going to square root it. So when you have, let's say, you were able to write z squared as uh, cosine 2 alpha plus i sine 2 alpha, and of course that's going to be multiplied by r, then when you cut this in half, it's just going to be the square root of r and then cosine alpha plus i sine alpha because you're supposed to divide the angle in uh, by 2 when you're square rooting it and then the opposite will be the other answer. Make sense? That's why I'm going to go with the double angle here. So let's go ahead and write this as r times e to the power i times 2 alpha. But what is r? r is the square root of a squared plus b squared so it's from the 5, 12, 13 triangle. It's going to be 13 times e to the power i times 2 alpha. So suppose our angle is 2 alpha. Now that 2 alpha actually satisfies the following. Since we can write this number as 13 times cosine of 2 alpha plus i sine 2 alpha, and that's equal to 5 plus 12 i. If you go ahead and distribute to 13 and set it equal to 5 and 12, you're going to get the following. Cosine 2 alpha from here is going to be 5 over 13, and sine of 2 alpha is going to be 12 over 13. Here's what we're going to do, a little uh, to trigonometric or geometric trick. We're going to draw an isosceles triangle whose hypotenuse is 13, so a right triangle whose hypotenuse is 13, and since this is going to be 2 alpha, these are going to be alpha and alpha, and from exterior angle theorem we're going to get 2 alpha, and then cosine is 5 over 13, so it's going to be a 5, this is going to be a 12. Now notice that from here, tangent alpha is going to be 12 over 18, and hypotenuse, this hypotenuse, is going to be from the Pythagorean theorem, 12 squared plus, let's call that c, c squared is going to be 12 squared plus 18 squared, and it's going to be 6 squared times 2 squared plus 3 squared, and that's 6 squared times 13. If you square root both sides, you're going to get c equals 6 root 13. So c is going to be 6 root 13, and then you're going to get the following. z is going to be at least z sub 1. Since z was written as 13 times e to the power i times 2 alpha, z sub 1 is going to be the square root, which is square root of 13 times e to the power i alpha, and that is equivalent to square root of 13 times cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. Let's go ahead and find out what those values are. Cosine alpha from this triangle is going to be 18 over 6 root 13, 18 over 6 root 13, and sine alpha is just going to be 12 over 6 root 13, and if you simplify those, you're going to get 3 over root 13 and 2 over root 13, and when you distribute the root 13, this is going to give you for z sub 1, 3 plus 2i. And obviously, z sub 2 is just going to be negative 3 minus 2i. The third method now. Ready? The third method doesn't always work, i got to tell you, but when it does, it works great. 5, I can break it down into 9 minus 4, because now this is 9 plus 2 times 3 times 2i, and this is 2i squared because that's negative 4 and now this becomes 3 plus 2i squared. So 5 plus 12i is 3 plus 2i squared therefore square root of 5 plus 2i is going to be 
3 plus 2i. Because remember, we said that, hey, this is equal to z squared. So if this is equal to z squared, square root both sides, you're going to get z equals 3 plus 2i. Of course, with a plus minus sign in the front, because there are two numbers whose square equals z squared. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.